Well, hello and welcome to the Photo Brigade podcast. I'm Robert Kaplan. Today, I have my friend, Lee Moore Garfinkel. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> we are going to talk about, you know, how photography saved your life today. It did. So that's exciting. So stay tuned for that. Before we before we start, you know, talking about that, I just wanted to, to say thank you to Adorama for the use of their event space to record this podcast. Also, thank you to Canon Professional Services um, uh, for all of their support and as well as Tenba Bags. Um, so with that being said, uh, we should let's first talk a little bit about how you and I got to know each other in, in, <laughs> in, in this wonderful photo community because right. fo that f photo brigade is just that it's a it's a photo community and we have these podcasts and events and stuff we do some a lot of them here in in Adorama but um, which are really great by the way because yeah. I listen to them and I learn so much and you can listen and watch these on Facebook live at the photo brigade uh, Facebook page, um, or you can go to photobrigade.com slash live. We'd love if you followed, hit subscribe, YouTube, all of the, all They're of really the above. They're really great. It's a good resource. Yeah, it's a great resource. And, and, um, so anyhow, you had come to one of I these events. Of I think it was a, a sports photography panel and, uh, our uh, mutual yeah. friend, David, uh, Bergman yeah. was, was on the panel and introduced us. We ended up going out for some food and drinks afterwards. Right. So, um, anyhow, I'm going to go through a couple of your photos. You do um, architecture, architectural photography, but you also do portraiture as well. And you've recently started a new series, which we're going to kind of get a first look at yeah. on comedians. Hey, it's the first look. It's it never is, been shared it before. It's literally so. the first look. So yeah. that's exciting. Uh -huh. um, so I'm going to just tell me, give me a little bit of background on you, um, you know, where you come from, how you got into photography. Um, and I'll go through some of your pictures while, while we do that. Okay. So, um, well, I come from, uh, I was originally from Israel. Uh -huh. I moved here uh, after I finished my army service. I was 21, almost, years old. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, um, photography came much later. Photog I've only been photographing for about five and a half years now, uh -huh. professionally. Uh -huh. I've always experimented. I've always uh, loved it. I took some classes when I was younger, um, like some uh, after hours classes at SVA, uh -huh. just learning darkroom and, uh, you know, black and white photography. Yeah. Um, but I was really just having fun with it. I wasn't, I never thought that it would be a profession. I, I when I went to college, I studied advertising and communications design. So oh, okay. my career started out really in the advertising industry. Um, I was first a studio coord uh, coord coordinator's assistant. Uh -huh. I was basically the person who, all the print ads would go through our department and I would uh, overlook how the mechanicals were being made. Right. Um, but then the recession hit. Oh. And in 2008, and I lost my job. Okay. And, and where um, was this? The, the, the job was here in New York? Here in New York. Here I worked York. for Gray Advertising. Oh, okay. And, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people were laid off and I was one of them. And um, it was pretty grim. And I couldn't find a job to save my life for about three years. Yeah. So, so what what did you do during that time? So I mean, that's, that's difficult here in New York. I mean, how did you make it work? It was really difficult because I I was basically living off of unemployment. Um, thanks, yeah. thanks Obama because he <laughs> made it. Obama? He made it longer, <laughs> last longer. Yeah. And every time I was like, I can't find a job. And but finally, um, I I knew a photo studio a Jewish wedding photo studio. Uh -huh. uh, I lived on Staten Island at the time. Uh -huh. And um, so I knew the owners and I walked into their studio and I basically said to the guy, you're giving me a job. Oh, well this, and <laughs> he yeah. Said, well, he, he said, well, are you a photographer? <laughs> I was like, no, but I'm willing to learn and uh, you know, I'll do anything. So, so, so wedding photography was sort was of my your, first your foray into, into, into photography. And we do have a, a folder of, of some of your, yeah, some so of that. And, and it doesn't necessarily reflect your skill level today, but just to, no, to like, no, no. These you were went just in and you, you know, you started working and showing. Well, I, I just want to say I was a second shooter. I was just shooting um, the, photo, what they call it, photojournalism of the wedding, which is just little things yeah. that you know, the main guy doesn't do. Right, right, the details and so on. Exactly. So you were second shooter. I was a second doing. shooter. Yeah. And um, they basically took a chance on me. They gave me that um, that first, you know, they kind of threw me into the water. And with wedding photography, as you know, you really need to know what you're doing because 
that moment will not happen again. Right. So I kind of had to learn on the spot. And um, I'm really appreciative of uh, that studio. They're called Hello Video, and, and they're they great. Did they help you? They give you advice? They, they kind of mentioned you They did. There were bit. actually two photographers there that took me under their wings. Uh, Helen... Um, Helen Russell and um, Itai Paz, who just decided to teach me. Right. I knew nothing technical right. because I don't know if you know this, but when you go to school for photography, you don't really learn how to be a photographer. You may learn how to take a picture. Right. So but you don't know necessarily the business behind it. No. And, and that's one of the things that I, I've been trying to be very critical about universities to mm -hmm. do is that you really do need to have those business classes because as you know, as you found out, you can be a a uh, wonderful photographer, amazing photographer, and not get any work because you're not a, bus a good business person and, and vice versa. A great business right. person or a very socially savvy person uh, who is a terrible photographer can somehow make a living from And it. yeah, and there's way too many of those actually. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, they took me under the wings and they, they showed me technical stuff as well that I didn't yeah. know um, and I learned on the job. So you kind of got yourself into shooting commercial spaces. Uh, so before, work. but before I got to that, uh -huh. um, I was shooting. So okay, so after three years of not having a job and pretty much not having a dime to my name and being nowhere and almost not having a place to even where to live, and um, I so I, I begged my way onto this job, which they gave me the chance. And then I was pretty soon I became like one of their most requested photojournalists. Mm -hmm. So I was working nonstop for them. But that's when I got a call back from an ad agency who I'd interviewed with a year and a half before. Uh -huh. And they finally said, you still want that job you interviewed for? And I'm like, of course. Non-photography? Non-photography and being an art, art director. Okay. So I took the art directing job. But then when they knew that I was a photographer, they, they decided to give me a chance and shoot their ed campaigns, which right. are global campaigns right. that they spend millions of dollars on producing and they just trusted me with the stills of those ads. And you know, it was nerve wracking at first, but uh, I've been doing it every year since. Yeah, that's I great. I do two campaigns, two global campaigns for them every year since. That's great. And also something that maybe we should mention is that being in that job as an art director, mm -hmm. right? That gives you a lot of like idea of how to price yourself to negotiate and, and so on because oh, yeah. you're 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 you've done you've been on the other end of that i have been and i know exactly how much if they like your work they will pay because they want to make the client happy and right. as much as the client constantly especially in the last few years constantly are cutting down the costs i mean these campaigns i've been working with every year it's been slashed and slashed and slashed right but if they know you can deliver, they will spend it because they want guarantee. Right. Because right. that doesn't happen again either. It's what like would a you say the key to if if I'm a photographer negotiating with uh, an advertising agency to do a, a a job, a campaign of some sort? Um, a lot of newer photographers might be too nervous to throw out a big number, thinking they're going to lose out the opportunity. Quite the opposite. It's the opposite. Because if opposite. someone gets a small number, they're going to be like, oh, oh, really? Really? Yeah. No, they don't respect you when you when you throw out a when smaller you, number. Yeah. And then I, you know, one thing that I've oft, often found is you, you throw out a, a larger number and, and know that you, you possibly could be coming back at it or even get them to throw out a budget. So exactly. So you, you can fill it out because, okay, for me, it's no, I mean, it's not, I don't know how much of a hero I am. I mean, I did start out shooting for them as an insider. So I would get obviously paid separately for the shooting because right. I was an art director. But now that I don't work for them anymore, um, I still they still hire me freelance. Right. They still want to keep me on, even though now they pay me much more because right. I don't work for them. Right. Um, they well, still you were a staffer then. I was you know, a staffer were, were, that they yeah. gave in ex house in house, and but yeah. they paid me separately for that because yeah. that was a whole lot right. of thing. But they still do. Um, I think that it's the production person. If you can just sort of level with them and be like, what's your Look, I want to I want to make sure we work together. I want to tailor this to your needs. To your needs. What's your budget this way? If if it's too low for me, I can I know what to do to make it work or you know, you can you can right. have a conversation. It doesn't have to be uh, right. uh, that's the number and that's it. There, right. there can be a back and forth. And then sometimes if you throw out a larger number and they tell you that your their budget is XYZ and then you meet them somewhere in between yes. or even come down to that. Yes. 
it makes them feel like you're giving them a, a deal that you're right. you know, you're doing something to build that relationship that exactly. I exactly exactly because they will have bigger projects yeah and they will if they you know love because it's all about for them it's really about the guarantee of knowing who they work with right they, I find I found that ag- agencies constantly go back to the same people because they want that they don't want to be surprised and not no. have something come out they want to be sure that somebody is gonna cover it do it well every time yeah period. they're nervous themselves it's yeah. all about the client so so um, so then let's talk about your your sort of how you got into architecture work I'm gonna go through so, some photos okay so I so as I was working at the ad agency I was because once you you know when you are unemployed you become so hungry for work that what happened to me was I became an overworking not only a workaholic, a work on nuts. Like I just was working at the ad agency and I was also shooting uh, weddings for a while. But then I stopped with the weddings and I started doing the commercial architecture. And that was just a fluke. I, I met a guy on the subway one day and we started talking because I found him to be interesting. But we just started talking. And uh-huh. when he heard that I was a photographer, he said that his company needs a photographer and he said it's he builds commercial spaces and um, Super cool. I said I don't shoot that though S- so you met and uh, you met a client a, a future client yep on, on the, the subway, subway. <laughs> because you spoke to somebody sitting yeah. next to you yep that's amazing uh, actually his bag w- I think was open and I said to him sorry your bag is open and <laughs> and and he's probably one of my best friends right now and um, uh, we so he gave me a chance again another person giving me a chance and um, I, the first job I did for them, I think we have that picture. Which one? That was the first ever architectural thing I ever did. Um, have we gone through it yet? It's, it's LK Bennett, London, so it's not that. No, it's probably in... I'm just begging, begging yeah, for yeah, some yeah. of these now. No. Um, so anyway. Yeah, that was the first one, and they were so happy that I've, be- I've become their regular photographer. Yep. And... Um, so that's great. So so you're doing more of that type of work now, right? That, that's uh, mostly what I do. That's, that's mostly what that's you do. That's my and this bread pays and your butter. Bills. It pays my bills. And and you have gone from art director without a job for three years, got into wedding photography, went back into art directing for a little bit. Where you? No, I t- wasn't an art director at the f- at the beginning in in uh, advertising. I was a studio coordinator. A studio coordinator, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And um and then. From there, you got into this freelancing. You're freelancing, full-time freelancing now? No, I'm working full-time for the company. They oh, basically okay. took me out of the ad agency. Oh, okay. Made me an offer. <laughs> made me an offer and I can't refuse. took me full-time as their in-house commercial spaces photographer because they build so many spaces in Manhattan. Oh, so this, the, 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 the fellow that you worked with, that you met on the train, he, is he the hired o- you. It's his company. Oh, I, so see, he hired I didn't even me. realize that he hired you to, to work for the company. Yeah. Like as a staffer. Yeah, I, I freelanced for them for... Oh, okay, that's awesome. I freelanced for them for like three years. Or f- yeah, and then uh, he was, why don't you just work for us full time? You shoot so much for us anyways. Yeah. And so it was the right Super time. Super cool. Sounds like a great, great, uh, great relationship you got there. Yeah, so that's what I do um, now. And, and so, so that's wonderful. And that's sort of like the dream is to figure out a way to do the job that you truly love yeah. and, and make a buck and make a living off of mm-hmm. it. So um, now let's maybe transition. Uh, before we go back into, I want to get into this uh, portrait series that you're doing now. We'll <laughs> talk about that sort of in a minute. Okay. But I want to talk a little bit more about your background, where okay. you're from, <laughs> your life story. Um, you were you, you were in the army. I was. In, in Israel. Yeah. Tell me about that. Like it's really not that special because you know. I think that's pretty special. Most people in Israel go to the army, and oh. uh, I was a teacher for new immigrants. Oh. Um, yeah. For and new and immigrants. how long? How long was that? Two years. Two years. Yeah. So you basically, you finish high school, but you know pretty much from the time you're 16 which division you're going to be in because uh-huh. you, you the interview process starts when you're in high school. Uh-huh. They test you out for. I think there are three meetings. There's the physical exam. There's the mental exam. And uh, then there's like an IQ sort of exam. Right. And then they categorize you. And I always wanted to be a... Was it a good experience? Oh, my gosh. Yes. So, I I mean, it's like, you know, a lot of like, for instance, here, we don't have mandatory service. Right. It's a volunteer service and everything. Um, So for me, it's hard to imagine having to 
you know well that. in my case mostly after the basic trainings mm-hmm. after you learn how to you know you learn how to use the rifle and all that kind of stuff and for me it was pretty much um, regular life because I was teaching new immigrants yeah so every once in a while I would go to my base but I was mostly with civilian um, new immigrants oh, okay gotcha. so cool so it wasn't so it wasn't like from I wasn't in combat or, or anything, anything like no yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know and you learn stuff from it and you, and you have a life experience from oh it. you sure do yeah because mm-hmm. they don't pay you so you have to survive on nothing yeah it's like they pay you a few few dollars maybe it's yeah crazy so why don't we talk a little bit um, more about uh, the the portrait series the that, that we're going to sort of officially share for the first time right yeah, now oh my God. let's go to it um, so you have started this portrait series on comedians yeah well you started with my favorite person here oh okay your favorite person and this is a this, this is a double exposure what is this, this yes is, this is a or, uh, what do you call many exposures many actually exposures. because my process is because i shoot architecture yeah that's that's the one thing is that so. your portraiture and your architecture have kind of merged because yes. you you there's a lot of tedious lining things up and exposure work so yeah so basically what i do is i i um i i bracket so uh, the room is separate first mm-hmm. i i do the plate of the room uh-huh. Right, so I bracket for the room, okay, and then um, I have my subject, and I light for them. But um, I also, if if there's a room with a situation where I have to light certain things, then uh-huh. I light it, and then I'll I'll bring in all the layers later. Right. Um, but but the main idea behind this series is um, the reason I started it is because I felt so lucky with the way everything has been going uh-huh. that I decided I really want to give back. Uh-huh. It's, it's time to give back yeah. because photography gave me so much yeah. and I'm in a good space right now and um, I've decided to, to do the Comedians Photo Series because I wanted to give back to a, an organization. I want to work with an organization that works with children who suffer from anxiety disorder and all kinds of mental issues and uh-huh. the reason I chose Comedians is one, I'm friends with so many of them. I'm, uh-huh. I've been friends with them for years, and I, I have an in. But the other reason is because they are a group of people who can understand. A lot of them suffer from anxiety, and uh, like like the rest of the of the population in the you know. But they get it, and they are the only people who take it and make something positive out of it. Very cool. They make comedy and very cool. Yeah. So there's an end goal to. Um, Raise a, is it more about raising awareness or raising funds? Raising funds. Um, there will be, the, the idea is to have a um, gallery opening that will also be a fundraising event for that cause. Yeah. And I hope to team up with the, the right organization for that. And so this is just the first handful of photos from These that series. F- yes. And what sort of lighting do you typically use? Like what kind of gear do you use? I'm so curious. very simple, actually. Um, I'm all about simplicity because... I have to say that I have um, people who volunteer with me on this. Uh-huh. So my my crew, it, I mean, it's limited. And I do have, because I work on the TV commercials, those are the people who have decided to team up with me on this. And they're all volunteering their time mm-hmm. and their skills. I mean, I have a person who's doing my uh, set design. I have a, a person who's... Um, yeah, her name is Mary. She's amazing. Mm-hmm. And I have a person who... Um, does custom like if you go back to the image of carmen lynch uh, right uh, the next nec- the p- before that one sorry that one um i had a fashion designer custom make that cape in a week because i had a dream and i came up with this idea and i just told it to her and she custom made it she got fabric and she just made it and her this name is one of my favorites of yours i just think the, the red pops it seems like a sort of a dreamscape Thank you. Uh, th- there's there is an idea behind each one. There's a story behind each one. Right. They're not just random shots. Right. You know, we I have a process. I, I sit down with each comedian uh-huh. and I interview them. Uh-huh. And that's how we come up with a story for each one that makes sense to them. Uh-huh. And because, you know, I could just I would have had a hundred shots by now if I just took portraits. Yeah, just quickie but portraits. These are stories. These are actual productions and stories yes. and, and so on. Yes. So this this photo, I'm actually kind of curious. <laughs> I mean, that, that <laughs> that's that's Jessica cool. Delfino. And again, all comedians, they're just having fun here. And um, the lighting here is pretty interesting. Are you light painting? No, 
No, I don't do light painting okay. for these. Um, so you okay. You just have so a light source between your legs or something. I did. I put a uh, I put a, f a little speed light in there, <laughs> and she's nine months nine months pregnant here, not and not I love her. her because I gotta say I love working with comedians because they're so open and they're so accepting of your ideas yeah. and and they collaborate and their ideas are awesome and, and Jessica here she's um she's a comedian who sings so her songs are funny yeah and she has one very funny song um I can't I don't know if what al words I'm allowed to say here but Whatever check her out she's yeah. pretty funny and she's nine months pregnant here and she was extremely nervous about what's going to happen to her career once she gives birth because have you ever seen a pregnant comedian, stand-up comedian? I don't think so. It's like it doesn't happen much. Yeah. So she basically, here it's a story of what is going to happen once, so she's given birth to herself. What's going to happen once this thing comes? Right. And uh, she has a mic in her hand because that's what she does. And right, right. Um, well, the baby cool. came and is amazing and beautiful. That's super cool. And, <laughs> and is her career going just fine? Her career, I think yeah. it's just fine. She's doing a lot of stuff right now. Yeah, we can have She's producing and writing and... It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Oh, so this is great too. I, um, and who's this? That's Jim Norton. He's a good friend. I love him. This is, this is wonderful. I, you know, and you were just talking about how comedians are so willing to do things. And I have in the past, not like you doing these big productions, but I, working for different publications doing press junkets for movies and stuff but the actor rain wilson who is oh i saw that one i lo by the way i love your work i just <laughs> i have to say I well thank you your work is really inspiring well, to me well thank you that was like a five minute like you know i had bang out like seven I portraits love in five minutes well so i basically told his um his uh, PR people that came in in advance and said, would he be interested in getting in the bathtub at all? <laughs> uh, you know, cause we were in a hotel room and I didn't know, you know, just trying to figure out something. And so finally he comes into the room and he, he goes, I heard that you wanted to take nude photos of me. <laughs> and all I have to say is I'm down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Jimmy the same way. Um, yeah. With Jim, I just said to him, what if we, and this is just me and Jim here. There's no production. It's just me and him. He just got this beautiful new apartment, and I, I saw his, his bath, and I was like, wow, it's so beautiful. Let's do something here. And that's how it happened. And you just direct him, and that's what great comedians are so great at. You just tell them one word, and they get it. They get it. They get it. And Jim is probably one of the best comedians out there, in my opinion, and um, I feel so lucky to work with him. Now, you know, lighting here... Um, it's just, you know, are these multiple exposures or is this just a single shot? This is probably two shots because I did one exposure for the candles. Right. Because I was going to say the candles are like. <laughs> yeah. Just kind of to get that. And then uh, I have a s one speed light that I'm holding like, you know, because the toilet was right here. So. So you were squeezed in on I the stood on. Here. I think I stood on top of the toilet and I just kind of had the lights, right. you know. Snooted right on his face. There, yeah. Yep. And you know there were times where I missed his face because it was so it was it was just a sm it's a speed light so right. it's a small like range of light. I bet there so was a lot of laughter taking these sh these shots. Too, we we working, had fun working with your. Uh, these There's comedians. always laughter working with these guys because yeah. they're the best. Hilarious. They're Hilarious. the best. This is this is wonderful. Love the color on this one. Thanks. This is just um, basically this comedian Jody Wasserman. She she is a self-described shopaholic. Mm -hmm. So. We decided to show her as a cookie shopping person who's <laughs> so tired she can't even get in the door, <laughs> you know. Very nice, very nice. That's great. And yeah, and I would love to talk about the other ones. Yeah, the ones that we've passed already. Yeah. Okay, let's go back to some of them here. Yep. This one is Dan Natterman. I love him, and he basically said his essence is of a guy in the '30s. So we decided to make him into a Louis B. Mayer type of guy, mm -hmm. basically a a um not a producer a um film exec or something an executive yeah. yeah exactly and he's you know he has this pen in the hand and just saying sign the contract kind of guy right so this right. is 1930s it inspired feels that way. it fe feels that way too very nice and then we talk and then about carmen her. yeah Here we go. and this is artie Fakwa, who's one of my oldest comedian friends and he was the first one in the series mm -hmm. and Artie went through a devastating car accident. Mm. It wasn't a car accident. It was really the accident with Walmart that Tracy Morgan was a part oh, of. Oh, he was in He that. was in, that, in there. Mm. And 
um, he almost didn't survive it. So as soon as he woke up from his coma he was on, I called him and that's when I took his shot. Yeah. So and he's doing all right now? He's great. Wonderful. Great. Well, that's good to hear. That was that was really yeah. crazy. And, and then sense. Adam Ferrara. We already d- we talked about this, this one, right? Um, yeah, we didn't really talk okay. about the yeah. thing, but Adam... Um, He's he's a great actor and comedian, uh-huh. and I'm so lucky to be working with someone like him. He was so great. Um, basically, this one, it's the idea of, um, it's all about how you look at things. Mm-hmm. You can see the positive side of things or the negative. Mm-hmm. And so he's in the two scenarios here. Mm-hmm. In one, he's winning, and one, he's lo- about to lose. So it's really all about how you decide to look right. at stuff. Perspective. Matter perspective. perspective. Exactly. Exactly. And then uh, w- that wasn't the last one, was it? Or was this the last one? Yeah, they oh, that oh, no, one. Yeah, we got this is great. <laughs> funny professor this looking. Is, this is Rick Chrome, who is uh, a really great comedian. He teaches comedy, actually. And I actually took his class because I wanted to know what comedians go through before I started the series so I can really understand them sort of like directors take acting classes just sure. so they can sure. know how to you know right so i took his class he's amazing amazing teacher but so basically i asked him what would you be if you couldn't be a comedian and he said a professor huh. so we made him the nutty professor the nutty professor yeah it's very nice i, I mean i really just the, the lighting's really great and i think it it's also just has one light yeah one light very simple it's it's, it's wonderful really so simple. I, I mean the progression is, is, you know, stark, you know, from when you started as a wedding photographer, got into the um, architectural work, which you're still doing. Yeah. And, and now thank you for giving us this uh, final, se- you know, this, this series here showing us for the first time this portraiture series. And I'm wondering, is there, you know, what's the future of the series, first of all? So, um all proceeds from these images, whatever they may be, now I'm going to start working with um, with more comedians, that h- more household names, and um, all proceeds from whatever we decide to do, it will all go to that organization that we end up teaming up with. Cool. Um, and there will be a book. That's th- that's the the hope that there will nice. be a book in the end of this project. Yeah. And I'm hoping to shoot as many comedians as possible. And I have quite a few on deck right now. That's great. And in the beginning, you know, it was kind of hard because you have to prove yourself uh-huh. and kind of convince them. But right. now, th- when they're seeing the images, they're the images speak for themselves, and they're they're more willing to be right. in it. So it's great. Super cool. Super cool. Um, well, you know, maybe there's ways that we. C- I mean. I'm that's what photo brigades for getting the word out. I'd love to talk with you further about it after this <laughs> podcast, of course, in any way that we can help get, get the word out there for this organization. And we love that you're doing this as a charitable uh, yeah. act as well. Thank I mean, you. Well, maybe it's a good chance to say thank you to um, just the people who are working with me on this. Like, you know, the make, I have two makeup ladies, uh, Mary and Gina, and I have um, um, the costume designer, Stevie, who's amazing. And Mary, who does the art directing, and cost you know a set design and it's a whole teamwork yeah. yeah and i have another friend ellen mcknight who she shoots the behind the scenes of these i post those on facebook as i go oh okay and she does yeah. a really great job with that and um and my friend michael who's extremely helpful at everything and just right well i mean i think that there's a lot a really positive future in, in this portraiture work beyond what you do with this comedian series and i and i I think I, I could speak for a lot of people that I hope that we see more of this, <laughs> we see more of you, you know, um, there's a lot, a lot of excitement. There's, a, I, I guess there's just, a, there's stories. I, there's one thing about looking at a really nicely, you know, composed room. And there's one thing about doing the same, taking that same, you know, look and, and, and I don't know what the word what the word I'm having a brain fart right now, <laughs> but um, being there's able a story to, behind yeah. them. So I mean, you know, and it's all done like for good, and it's all from my heart and from their heart. The comedians are so generous yeah. when they hear that it's for, you know, an organization that's right. going to benefit children. Immediately, it's like, okay, how can I help? Cool. So, so what 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 else? I mean, anything else next beyond beyond this portrait series? Do you have anything else like in like what you know you coming up with more dreams with with uh yeah there's one more kind of thing that i want to tackle and i want to work for um i want to shoot for publications uh-huh. um, i've always wanted to do editorial work so that's the next step 
when I started this project, I was kind of, I want to do an editorial look to that, give an editorial look so uh-huh. I can sort of start learning how to do that. Right. And so yeah, that's the next thing I think. Very cool. Very cool. And you said you did some classes at uh, SVA? Yeah, I, d- I think I took like two classes uh, throughout my 20s when I was an amateur having fun with c- the right. camera. I took a black and white class and right. then another lighting class. Um, and and th- this lighting that you're doing here, is it mo- mostly, like you said, just speed lights? So some of them are speed lights. Uh, this one, for example, is not. This one is um, an alien B an light alien B. Nice. with a medium size um, softbox. softbox. And really, that's it. Really, I I think that the fact that I bracket my shots for the background right. gives me so much control. Right. Because the light will really just light him. Right. So the room is really my my bracketing. And that's in that, and that you wouldn't really have that unless you shot, shot this architecture. And and when you shoot architecture, do you often use lighting in your architecture work as well? Sometimes. Sometimes there's no time. Right. And actually some of my favorite shots are just bracketing. Yeah. Bracketing, just yeah. Because there's really no time. I shoot commercial architecture. Like right. It ta- there's so many, you know, sometimes I work with the architect's office. They help out. Right. They, um, if you, if you want to see um, my Spotify work, this was all... There was help from the architectural office, and right. But most of them, I just I'm on my own, and I'm just. Well, it's also interesting too because as a photographer myself, I I've worked for newspapers. So when I freelance for the New York Times or something, they'll have me go for the real estate section to shoot interiors of a house that, or apartments being sold for ninety million dollars, something crazy like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, they have this special. Like, they have an ethics issue with with the bracketing and stuff like you can't you can't merge two two pictures mm-hmm. together right right so you have to light so it so it's like well okay. i that's the thing is i rarely light a room so it's like always trying to get it perfect in one exposure um but then you get the diff- different look you get the bleeding out from the outside windows it's you know it's white out there you don't see the outdoors you, right or, or the the bulbs they they bleed out and everything that, that is true and uh, um actually i learned a lot from um uh, mike kelly uh, Michael Kelly, who mm-hmm. he has a tutorial on f-stoppers. Mm-hmm. Um, I I learned a lot from him. He he uses the back bracketing, but he also uses lighting. Mm-hmm. So, cool. um, you know, whatever works for you. It's it's really a matter of like making sure that you get the best shot possible. And if I don't know ethics or whatever, you right. Well, ethics is it's like a it's whole different thing when you get into editorial photography. Yeah. It's like right. S- and different publications are different about it, but specifically um, the. Uh, New York Times is just very strict about it. Everything has to be one shot, no cloning, no this, no, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, wow. Okay. Um, just one of those things when you go to editorial or if you start shooting for publications, they'll, they'll be like that. But and also plus when it you pays should a lot less. <laughs> so no, you can I know. It's certainly not going to be for the money. That's as, for sure. As David, Bur- uh, David Burnett said, you will make untold hundreds of dollars working <laughs> editorially. <laughs> well, you know what? It's fine. You know. <laughs> as long as you're doing what you like. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so before we end this, yeah. um, given that you have kind of gone, gone, done the ebb and flow of, of you know, your, your career path and had time where you didn't have a job and you got into it. And now you're actually making a living doing the thing that you love, which is photography. And, yeah. and there's so many people that are maybe coming up from college, maybe getting into the business, want to know how to do that. What would be your advice to anybody trying Just to get in this business? Just work hard. Um, when I started out, I because I didn't really know anything, I uh, literally, I started photography without knowing photography. Mm-hmm. So I became obsessed with photography. So there's so many free resources out there online nowadays. Mm-hmm. Just take everything you can out of them and just constantly learn and constantly challenge yourself. And I can't even tell you how many times I was so nervous about um, an outcome of something, but yeah, that's how you grow. You challenge yourself and just work work hard is always my best advice to anybody right, and right. you know work hard work hard and network and network you're good at networking network. just be nice to people yeah just be nice cuz you never know you never know just be nice talk to people on trains <laughs> it could lead talk to anybody i talk to i'll talk to anybody on the street even <laughs> yeah <laughs> well any anyhow i i think that that's about it um okay i love it if if 
you guys could all, you know, hit the subscribe button if you're watching on Facebook Live. Uh, hit the hit the subscribe button so you see our updates every time that we um, yeah. come online. Follow us on all our social media at Photo Brigade. Um, do you have social media you want to shout out? I just have my Facebook is where I usually put all my stuff. Um, it's okay. uh, Limor Azran Garfinkel. Okay. And uh, my website is just my full name, LimorGarfinkel.com. Okay. And we'll have that, of That's course, down below in the comment section. Or, I mean, yeah. the caption. Okay. Um, so thanks again to Adorama. Thanks again to Canon Professional Services. Thanks again to uh, Temba Bags. And thanks again to all of you, the Photo Brigade community, for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you all again next time. Thank you, Limor. Thanks so much for having me. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.